my friends welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today I would like to tell you a little bit more about built-in weapons. In the previous tutorials we created a bow item and this bow item its only effect is to shoot a built-in arrow. So what does it mean? What can you do with built-in arrows? And more importantly, what you can not do. So, um, if we have a look at our bow item, its main uh, feature is to call the built-in function start bow, and this built-in function start bow um, does pretty much everything for you, uh, and it exists for historical reasons, um, but it's not very custom. Um, customizable. But um, maybe it's enough for you, for your project, maybe you can still use it. And uh, if it's not enough, you we will have some uh, future tutorials about re-implementing um, shooting arrows in pure Lua, so that you can really do everything that you can. So let's have a look at, at the documentation of this start bow function. Um, it's quite short, the documentation. <laughs> it makes the hero shoot an arrow with a bow. And there is a link to arrow, uh, which leads to this page. Arrow, arrows are a type of entity, like enemies, hero, teletransporter, treasure chests, and, and everything that can have coordinates on the map. So an arrow entity, it's uh, just the arrow that you, that you see, that you shoot with the bow and that can reach an enemy, or that can reach a wall. So, and if you look at the documentation of Arrow, you will see what I mean by it exists only for historical reasons. There is absolutely no function available. Nothing can be customized. Um, not, not exactly nothing. I will explain what you can do in this tutorial. Uh, in particular, you can hurt enemies, activate switches, um, and there. So we have arrows, and we have um, about three other built-in weapons. Let's say um, the hookshot. It also has absolutely no uh, customization features. The boomerang, um, same remark, and the bombs, same remark again. Um, so maybe you can use these built-in weapons for your projects if they are okay for you. Otherwise, you can re-implement them in Lua, um, probably with custom entities, or you can use uh, some of some such re-implementations that we already did in other projects. Um, so why do we have these built-in weapons that are absolutely not customizable? Um, they were made back when Solaris, the Solaris project was an engine for only one particular game, um, namely Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX. And at that time, there was no custom entities in the Lua API. A lot of things were done, were done uh, built in in C++ directly. And um, yeah, so all of this was very old, is very old, that was before Solaris 1.2, actually. Custom entities were introduced in, in Solaris 1.2. And so, yeah. Um, what can you do still with arrows? Let's take the example of arrows. Um, what you can do is customize the effect of arrows on enemies. So by default, they are set sensible to arrows and they lose one life point. Okay. Um, if I go to my enemy script, maybe you remember this function set attack consequence that takes two parameters. The first one is the received attack that you want to customize. Um, let's have a look at, at the documentation maybe enemy set attack consequence. So the built-in attacks that are recognized by this function 
include swords, thrown item, and our built-in weapons that I was mentioning, like explosions, arrow, hookshot, boomerang. So this is this refers to the built-in arrow. So yeah, we can write set attack consequence arrow. What happens when the, the enemy receives an arrow? And you can choose either the, the number of life points that the hero will lose or some other things. Um, let's try, for example, immobilized. Let's say that the arrow will no longer really hurt the this particular enemy, but it will only immobilize it for a few seconds. Okay, I will just reload the map to, to get an enemy. Actually, there is also one here. Okay, and now it's immobilized, and after a few seconds, it will shake and it will uh, restart. So yeah, a lot of things are not customizable, but at least you can do that. You can implement a boss that will only be sensible to arrows, or that will have a particular re reaction to arrows, as you want. So that's one thing. Another feature supported by built-in arrows is activating switches. Um, not walkable switches, but solid switches or switches of type arrow target. I will explain the difference. So if you make a solid switch, let's uh, take a sprite that looks like a solid switch. So solid switches are the ones that are not activated when working on them. You actually cannot work on them, but you can uh, trigger them with the sword or with any uh, built-in weapon. Again, for instance, with the bow or by throwing an item on them, I think. Yep, so here it activated. We saw that the color changed, but it has no effect, of course, because I didn't write any any script. Um, and if you if you select a subtype arrow target, it means that only arrows can activate it. So that might be used for, for example, a special statue uh, like you have in Zelda, um, a, a, an eye statue that can only be activated by shooting an arrow on it. Um, let's let's take this one. Um, if I replace this one by this one, for ex example, and I put my arrow target here, so without any sprite for the arrow target, because it's actually the statue tile itself that gives the uh, visual. Let me just reload this map. And, well, actually, I need to see something happen. Uh, let's play a sound when the when the switch is triggered, like uh, a treasure sound, for instance. Okay. I need to reload the map again. Yep, it worked. I activated the switch. And by the way, an, uh, a feature that I didn't mention, but that you saw, is that the arrow will follow the enemy. Um, well, actually, now that the enemy is immobilized, you don't see it. Let's remove this line to get back to the default behavior of you losing one life point. Um, I need to take the bow again because I restarted the game. Oh, I missed. Yeah, so the hero, um, sorry, the, the enemy will move with the arrow following him. Um, you don't see it for long because the arrow actually disappears after a while. I think you saw it. Um, so yeah, all of these behaviors are provided by the engine and are not really <coughs> customizable, except the effect of an enemy that receives an arrow. And so maybe all of this is fine for you if you if your game uh, features are 
are actually uh, the same as, as as what I just explained. But a lot of things are also not customizable with uh, these built-in arrows. Um, when you shoot an arrow, there is this bow animation that is triggered. And so the bow animation is, um, let me find it, hero, uh, the tunic sprite, it has to be called uh, exactly bow. And if you want something more advanced, for instance, you um, let's say you want the hero to be able to uh, pull his bow but not release it yet and still work while pulling his bow um you cannot do that with the i mean maybe maybe you could actually <laughs> but by default start bow will just shoot an arrow will just trigger this particular animation and then shoot an arrow um we have some sprites that uh still provide the the behavior of, of walking while pulling a bow um yeah, I guess you could make a script that um, lets the hero walk with this animation and later uh, call hero start bow. So this might actually be customizable. But the main things that are not customizable it is what happens after you call uh, hero start bow. Because then you have no control over what happens. It will um, yeah, trigger that animation that I just mentioned mentioned the, the bow animation of the hero and create an arrow entity. The movement of this arrow uh, is is very hard to control. I mean you could there are, there are some ways to uh, like work around and, and make some hacks to um, change the movement of the arrow but it would be much much easier and cleaner with custom entities. So the arrow has some speed, some movement, and it will stop when reaching a wall, and then it will uh, stay there for. Well, it will play that little animation, and it will stay there um, for a few, for a small delay, and all of this is is not customizable. What is also not customizable is which entities will react to to the bow. Um, as I said, as I showed, you can make enemies um, react when receiving an arrow. You can make switches that can be triggered by arrows, but that's it. And something also important is that you have very little control of what can be traversed or not by arrows they will be able to traverse these low walls here and of course not regular walls um, how is that possible actually this small wall here this small barrier is um, if you edit the tie set its ground property is low wall which means a wall that cannot be traversed by hero by the hero by enemies by npcs but that can be still traversed by projectiles so you can actually have arrows uh, traverse these low walls same for the, the boomerang and maybe the, the hook shot i don't remember um, arrows will also stop in uh, onto these uh, invisible wall entities if uh, obstacle for projectiles is checked. So if you uncheck this one, um, let's uncheck it for, for this one too, maybe. And if I reload the map, then the arrow will be able to traverse this invisible wall. Yeah, so it can traverse this one and this one but uh, not this one so this is still something that you can 
a little bit customized. But the property obstacle for project size applies to yeah all project size. So thrown items, arrows, uh, hook shot, and uh, the boomerang also. So if you want different behavior for these entities, um, you are stuck if you if you use built-in weapons. Um, okay, something else that you cannot really do, or that would be very hard to do, is um, various types of arrows, like if you want fire arrows, ice arrows, light arrows, or things like that. Um, Hero Start Bow does not provide these. So probably you, you would not use Start Bow, but you would trigger your own animations and create appropriate custom entities. And we will learn how to do that later. Um, okay, so I guess that's it about arrows. Maybe they are fine for you. Uh, like I said, yeah, there are still a few things that can be uh, customized, like enemy reactions. You can trigger switches win with custom uh, with built-in arrows. So maybe that's enough for you. Um, Let's mention a little bit other uh, built-in arrow, um, built-in weapons. So the hookshot is re very similar to the Zelda Link to the Past hookshot, and unfortunately, you cannot control the distance, the maximum distance of the hookshot. You cannot control which entities it will hook to. So it will hook to treasure chests, um, destructible objects like like vases. But um, if that's not what you want, you are a little bit stuck with the uh, built-in hook shot. But you you can either re uh, rebuild it from in pure Lua or um, pick some implementations that we already did in pure Lua for our more more recent projects. Same for the boomerang. Uh, you can shoot a boomerang, but you cannot really control what, what happens if, if that's not exactly suited for you. And same for bombs. Um, you can do map create bomb to, to create a bomb, but um, what happens next is not really customizable. In particular, you cannot control the delay after which the bomb will explode. And for most projects, the default delay is after is actually not great because it's quite long. Again, these were created for one particular project uh, a long time ago, and uh, they are really not meant to be used in um, new projects. Uh, we recommend to use custom entities, unless they happen to fit exactly with what you need, then you can use these. Um, okay, I think that's all I wanted to say for this tutorial. Uh, again, it's it's your choice. You can still use these for your projects. They are still supported, but they will not have more customization features. Uh, the the new way to do, I mean, new <laughs> new since Solaris 1.2, is to use custom entities, and we will learn to do that in a future tutorial. We will also make an inventory menu uh, very soon because I've been. Uh, promising that to you for a long time and I know you want it. So I think the uh, next tutorial will be about an inventory menu and then we will see custom entities. Probably still with the example of the of the bow and arrows. So thank you very much for uh, following this tutorial and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.